I'm so sorry. Uh, once again, thank you so much for being here. Today, we are very fortunate to have a, a COPS community organized for public service. Our presenter is Laura Grill. She is with the uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe uh, Catholic Church in Elotes. We also have Tony Diosade here with, uh, and they, they have been uh, really helpful in going out in the community and doing these presentations. So let's have a round of applause for them. All right, I want to congratulate you too on uh, shaking yourselves out of bed on a Saturday morning. Uh, and and I know I know it's it's out of love that you're here because some of you are coming with questions for yourself, but also questions for your family and for your friends. And today we're also going to celebrate some sweet fruit because I understand that there, we have navigators and CACs with us today who have trained and invested a lot of time and energy in order to be able to answer your questions. So now they'll have that opportunity before the day is over to visit with you. Um, as Irma said, uh, my name is Laura Brill. I'm a parishioner at Our Lady of Guadalupe in Holotus, and I'm also a member of an organization called COPS Metro. Oh, sorry. Uh, COPS Metro is a uh, broad-based institution with 33 dues-paying member institutions. This organization, rather, uh, it combines uh, faith leaders, educators, um, school people, and uh, we work uh, effectively in, in our communications, uh, not only amongst ourselves, but with elected officials and uh, with business community leaders. So uh, our presentation today is one that we want to continue to improve on and uh, you know, see how we can serve our greater community area. Uh, one thing about COPS is that it fosters a relational culture. So we're not just pushing out information to you, we wanna have a conversation uh, with you. We wanna hear um, your story and, and you know, the question that you have, what your experiences are, um, and have that, uh, that loop so that in doing so, we can consider together how we can improve the situation. You know, how can we advocate for positive change? The big uh, elephant in the room is that the website, the healthcare.gov, is uh, not where uh, we thought that it would be at this time. And so it's going to take a lot of communication uh, on an ongoing basis so that we can catch up to the point where. Uh, where that, that is working as well as the navigators and the CACs and the phone lines and the other ways. We'll, we'll have to continue that conversation, keep communicating uh, to our community what's working, what's not working, uh, what needs to change. So in this session, this is a, a little bit of an introduction to the rest of the morning. We want to give you a background on the state of healthcare, just a very light overview. We want to talk about the health insurance marketplace, which at one time was known as the exchange. We want to talk about who benefits, how it works, and it wouldn't be um, it wouldn't be a COPS Metro presentation if we didn't give you a little bit of an opportunity to discuss together uh, what your reactions are and what our next step should be. So regarding the background, According to the Center for Public Policy Priorities, which is a nonpartisan group, there are 6.1 million uninsured Texans, a million of which are children. And uh, uh, one of our leaders included that bullet, Texas leads the nation. Everything's big in Texas. This is a big problem. Okay, we don't want to be number one in this. In our own Bear County, we have 390,000 uninsured, about a quarter of our population. So what is the health insurance marketplace and, and uh, how does it help us with that you know, gigantic problem? In 2010, the uh, Patient Protection Affordable Care Act created the marketplace, or also known as exchange. And the idea is that it would provide a one-stop shop to compare plans, so as opposed to visiting Humana, and then you visit Aetna, and then you visit Blue Cross Blue Shield, it'd be a way for you to dive into uh, one one stop 
on the on the internet or on the phone or with your navigator with a broker and find uh, what your options are. Also, the Affordable Care Act provides tax subsidies to make insurance more affordable. So a subsidy is just you know money that the government puts in to make a product more affordable. Of course, the government gets this money from us, but it's a way of making uh, making health insurance coverage affordable for the people uh, we heard about on that previous slide. So what are the benefits of the insurance that is provided under the health insurance marketplace? Preventative care is covered 100%. And we know that that's one, one of the things that drive health care costs up is that we wait until uh, it's an emergency or a crisis before we get attention. You know, it'd be cheaper to do it with preventative care. Maternity and newborn care, you know, that's our most vulnerable population. Prescription drugs, uh, we don't want people choosing between food and their medicines. Mental health and substance use disorder services, um, that's an area I think we all know in our community that many struggle. Uh, it's, it's, it, it's not, a, you know, they, they have uh, health care issues, but it's come because they weren't having their mental health needs addressed. Also, um, these kinds of plans cover children on their parents' plan until age 26. And I'm sure uh, some of you in this room are probably waiting to kick out your 40-year-olds, so we know they don't grow up even at 26. Uh, it caps out-of-pocket expenses, so what the individual pays versus what the plan pays. So who benefits? Um, this graph has got a lot of information on it. Where you see FPL, that stands for Federal Poverty Level, and uh, so we've got fam family annual income, family size across the horizontal axis. So family size of one, an individual, you know, family size of two, maybe husband and wife, uh, mom and child. Uh, the family size under the ACA is you and your dependents. So even if grandma lives in the household, if she's a dependent, she's part of your family as well. Um, so 100% of the federal poverty level up to 400% of the federal poverty level is who is going to benefit. So for example, let's say we took a family size of three, maybe single mom and two kids, Federal poverty level is $19,530. So um, be, at that family size that has a combined income of between $19,530 and $78,120 would be eligible for some help with their, um, with their insurance plan. So what is the status? Well, right now we're in that enrollment period. October 1 to the end of next March. Now, I was just listening to a news report this morning, and, and, and the, the, the goal, the promise, is that by the end of November, that we would have that uh, healthcare.gov site working. But the reality is, insurance is complicated business, uh, even for um, you know, people who've had it for years, and so I think a lot of us are going to seek out the help of navigators and CICs and other people who can guide us through the process. And hopefully through institutions like this, like Central Med, that we trust um, that uh, can, can you know, just provide us that chance maybe to talk with each other and our neighbors about what's, what's necessary. So we'll be using a lot of different means to get involved. Uh, to get enrolled, and we have between October 1 and 331 of next year. Coverage begins January 1, and so do penalties for those who are qualified and eligible to participate, but who are not covered or choose not to be covered. So we've got a lot of time between uh, now and the end of March, but uh, you know it's one of those things where we just have to dig in. And those of you who are here are pioneers. I'm sure you'll be educating your families and, and your friends about it. Um, you know, that is one thing that uh, that that penalty is, is looming. So people are going to have to weigh, what is the cost uh, to my family? Can I budget for this health insurance 
or am I going to pay a penalty? And what are the pros and cons of that? Um, it, it's reported that 110,000 residents in our county may qualify. Um, and you'll notice that's a you know, different number than what we had earlier. There's going to be some people who fall through the cracks just because we didn't, in the state of Texas, opt to expand Medicaid. But even at that, there's going to be 110,000 who will qualify. Uh, Health and Human Services has granted some resources to hire navigators, certified application counselors, and other personnel to help. Um, there are three navigator agencies in Merritt County. They've received some grants right now for that gigantic population. We're looking at about 22 navigators. All right? And different organizations are also training CACs and others. Um, it's a position of great confidence and a great responsibility. These are people that are going to be handling our personal information. And uh, so they need to have that strict privacy understanding. Um, our governor, too, is looking for even tighter uh, regulations for navigators, requiring U.S. citizenship, uh, more training for uh, those people who are going to take that position of such great responsibility. Here are a few details. Um, you may have heard these terms before, bronze, silver, gold, platinum. I mean, it sounds like the Olympics. Uh, but a lot, a lot of things are keyed off of that silver plan. So the, the, the expected actuarial value of what during the year my health costs are going to be, the silver plan would cover 70%. And I, as the insured, or we, as the, our insured family, would cover 30%. So you can see that we've got those different levels where the plan pays more uh, than, the, than the insured family, but it, it varies. So the, 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 the most co complete coverage is where the plan is actually kicking in 90%. And so you can imagine that those who have the most dire financial situations are, are going to be helped subsidize so that they, you know, because they just don't have the budget so that, that the plan will be kicking in more money. Um, one thing that's uh, helpful for us with COPS Metro is we want to have conversations with you. We don't want to add to the confusion. So it's important that we learn to have that vocabulary of insurance, not that we're going to be uh, doctors and lawyers, but just so that we can understand what we're comparing, because a lot of these words are, are uh, just flying around. So what is premium? That is the amount you pay for your health insurance coverage. So you might talk about an annual premium, or in this case, maybe a monthly premium. A lot of us budget on a monthly basis, so they're talking about a monthly premium. A deductible would be an amount of money you pay every year before your insurance kicks in. So if I have a $500 deductible, I'm paying out until I reach that $500 deductible, and now the plan starts paying at that percentage rate that we talked about. What is the copay? Some of you have experience with that. You go to the doctor, and maybe your copay is $25 or $30, so the bill may be $150, but when you come, you know, before they even open the door, they say, you're copaying? Okay, 25, okay, come on in. So that's how that works. The lifetime cap, would be that, that cap, the, the, the lid, the ceiling on what over, um, over your whole lifetime would be paid. The term out of pocket refers to your pocket, okay, the pocket of the insured, the insured family. And other things just to, you know, that you'll hear other terms will be healthcare navigators, application assisters, Certified application counselors, often you'll hear people say CACs and champions, woo, champions for coverage. So those are some young people who are, are being trained in our, in our area. Uh, some of them are, are being trained for the medical profession who have taken on this, this role in our community to help share. Their, um, their goal is to help us not only with the education process, but depending on their certification, also to enroll us so they can sit down with us one-on-one -on -one 
and uh, we can complete the enrollment process with some of those people. Um, so what determines what the insured, what the family will pay? Uh, each insured uh, pays depending on their age. Okay, you can imagine a younger person versus uh, a much older person, where you live, you know, some, you know, communities, you know, life's a little tougher. Uh, family size, whether or not you smoke. But as we know from uh, when we first heard about uh, Obamacare, about the ACA, one of the, the great things is that pre-existing conditions will not be considered. So every person, you know, who's been rejected a hundred times, you know, now will have access to health insurance. Who can use the marketplace? Actually, small businesses can also use this to help their employees, families, and individuals. Now, there are some restrictions, U.S. citizens and legal residents, okay? We must live in the U.S. and we're not incarcerated. Who cannot use the marketplace? Persons who are undocumented residents, the DREAMers, DACA, uh, residents with deferred action status, and those who already have insurance under Medicaid, CHIP, Medicare, that's going to continue. So how is it that the government is subsidizing uh, our participation and our ability to buy health insurance? It's through this, this system of tax credits. So the tax credit is going to be the way that the government helps you pay. Um, now, one thing that's important to know, uh, I'm not 100% sure if it'll come on a slide later, but I want you to understand that, you know, we talked about annual premiums and monthly premiums. Well, I pay, I file my taxes every year and I pay my taxes every year, and that's when I would get a refund or have to pay, you know, the rest of my taxes. That would also be when I could apply my, my tax credit. But that doesn't work for everybody. For some of us, it makes more sense to budget on a monthly basis. So there's also a way that we can apply these tax credits, not just when we file our taxes, but every month, okay? So uh, there's a calculation involved. What is, you know, based on my income, my family size, all those other things we talked about, what is my premium going to be? What is my subsidy? And then the government will give you this tax credit that you can either apply on a monthly basis or when you file your taxes at the end of the year. Now that payment doesn't go to you in a check. It goes to the insurance company to pay for your insurance coverage. Um, part of the calculus is that people should not be paying more than 9.5% of their income in health care premiums. So if, um, you know, what we're looking, you know, there's a reasonable amount, a percentage of your income to spend on housing, to spend on food, to spend on insurance. So if, you know, you're, you're looking for your options and you see, well, you know, I would love to have this insurance that I'm eligible for, but it's gonna be X amount of my salary. That's what those tax credits, that's what the subsidy has in mind, to make it affordable where it's kind of in that range, no more than 9.5% of your income. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, the government sends that money, that portion of your premium directly to the insurance company so that you just have that remainder. Um, the, the two main ways that we're going to constantly be talking about getting access to the information and to enroll are the website and the 1-800 number. As I mentioned, you know, the, the, uh, all over the United States, you know, this isn't just in our community that the, that the website is not working. The hope is that by the end of November, that piece is going to be working. So that healthcare.gov. Um, the 1-800 number works now. Um, now, I understand some people have called and they're getting referred to the website. So if, if those two things aren't working, here's another option. Besides online and phone, we have in-person. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, sorry. So, sorry. Uh, I was thinking the next slide might have had those, a list of those uh, people. The terms that we're using for people that help us enroll are navigators, 
certified application counselors, application assisters, and those champions for coverage. Um, we at COPS Metro, we're just part of the education process and we're part of that conversation so that we can you know, keep advocating for making this work for our community. Um, you may be wondering, well, what is it that I'm going to, what kind of information do I need to apply? Uh, I'm, you're gonna need a social security number. Uh, employer and income information for those members of uh, your household, your dependents. If some of your family members already have insurance, you're going to need, well, what's the name of that insurance and what's the policy number? And um, an employer coverage tool is something that um, your employer will be able to give to you. And it explains what coverage you have and what, what uh, you know, the costs and so forth. So what happens if you don't get coverage? Because you can imagine a lot of people are going to throw their hands up in the air, right? So what if I don't? Well, if you don't have coverage as of January 1, you will have to pay a tax penalty. And so in the year 2014, <coughs> it will be 1% of your income or $95 per person, whichever is higher. And some people are gonna opt for that, okay? Now some people though are gonna find out what it means to have health insurance coverage, and they may convert those uh, those penalty payers. But I can understand, you know, budgeting is always hard. The fee for uninsured children is forty-seven fifty a year, but the most a family would pay in penalties would be two hundred and eighty-five dollars a year. Um, then there's a, an amount for twenty fifteen. It goes up. Uh, you know, marginally, I think it's like 285, and then 2016 it's 695. All right, we've given you tons of information, and uh, again, it's not to make us experts. It's just to help us have this conversation together about you know what does this Affordable Care Act? What does it mean for us? What is it going to do for us? Um, and how are we going to um, educate others in our community? So, um, Tony, do you have a suggestion for a conversation well, starter? Well, depending on time, how much time we have? We're, uh, it's their time. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. I want to make sure we, we, we don't take up all the time in the morning, we could. <laughs> what, I, what I think would be best to do first is for each of you to talk to someone next to you about the things you heard a question, a question that, you know, well, you heard this, but I heard that, so what about that? You know what I mean? Talk to each other for just a minute uh, about a question, about something you heard that you thought, oh, I didn't know that. Did I hear that right? And then, after you've talked amongst yourselves, then we can have a conversation, okay? That sound okay? And, and this will right? yes? no. <laughs> prime the pump a little bit for you to have conversations with the navigators in the CAC. So something that stuck out for you, maybe a question that you have, something that surprised you. So it'd be great if you talk to somebody you've never even met. And we'll yet. just take like three minutes for that. Yeah. You're not gonna be here all, all that one morning. Three minutes to talk, talk to each other real quick. What did you hear? What did you hear? Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna bring it back. And I'm so proud of you, except for the, the, the exhausted child in the back. Everybody is having a great conversation. That's awesome. I'm just glad my voice is so soothing. We're very calming in fact. They're in a coma in the back now. So. Um, but uh, we, we have a lot of good questions. Just so that we can all hear each other, I'm going to ask us to, to bring our, our individual conversations to a close. And um, let's see, we had a question from probably, what are, you're probably the youngest person in the room. Okay, so the, okay, oh, well, that's right. But he doesn't count, he's in a coma, so. That's right, we need, to, we need the health care to get started right away. But ask your question again. I was asking uh, for some clarification on the dates for the uh, March 31st date compared to the January 1st date. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of this uh, centers, a lot of the enforcement centers around the IRS, okay? And so you can imagine that if our, if our charge is we have, to in, we have to make a decision about this 
and enroll by 3-31-2014. If we have not, then for this calendar year of 2014, we are going to owe that penalty, okay? So they're probably not gonna catch up with us until we do our taxes, but the idea is that every year, every calendar year, you have to make some kind of decision about your insurance. Hopefully you'll make an informed one by coming to things like this, but that's, you know, the penalty kicks in. They're not gonna to come to your house on January 1. It's that when you fill out your taxes and so forth, you're gonna be responsible for that tax penalty. Okay? Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, let me commend you on your presentation. I've been to several of these presentations. You have made it very plain, so I don't know. Compliment how special for what y'all done. For my major concern and what I hear in the community, and I work with the neighborhoods first alliance, is that we it, the communities that we're working, a lot of people don't have computers mm -hmm. and they can't go online anyway, specifically in the east, west, and southern sectors of the city. What is the strategy of Cops Metro and Central Med in making sure that we get those people enrolled? Uh, in the system. Do you all have a strategy for that? I think what you're doing here is beautiful, but I think we have a lot of people who can't even have, don't even have a computer, and we could get those numbers up now. So what is the strategy here? All right, if, if I may. What we're going to be doing with Cops Metro, as, first of all, as you know, or may have heard, we, we sponsored a, a stakeholders gathering a, a little over a month ago of different organizations who are, who are going to be in the forefront of this particular uh, uh, ACA. From there, there are some decisions made on, on how to help streamline the process for folks, especially those folks who don't have access to the internet. Central Med ha has their own plan because they were there too, they are part of that conversation, and they're here, they, they can give us more information about what they're doing. Correct. Um, one of the issues in San Antonio is that there's different organizations that were funded to promote this program. Central Med and Communicare being the federally qualified health centers were given the funding to provide uh, application assistance in particular to their own patients first and to their local community. So whatever service area we are at, that's who we're marketing. However, we joined uh, forces with the City of San Antonio and Bear County because there's different organizations that are doing outreach and education, COPS being one of them. Uh, the City of San Antonio Metropolitan Health District, the Mayor's Office, the County Judge's Office, and also uh, University Health System, UT Health Science Center. There's a lot of organizations that we're part of a committee that we visit with and go over what areas are not being addressed. And if those areas are not being addressed, ACOG was one of the organizations that was funded through CMS, and they're the ones that have navigators. There's a difference between certified application counselors and navigators. And the difference is that the, sort of the navigators were funded through CMS grant directly. The uh, certified application counselors came from a grant through the Bureau of Primary Health Care uh, for community health centers. And the main difference between a navigator and a certified application counselor is that the navigators are also responsible for educating the small business community about the SHOP program, letting them know that they can sign up uh, for a better rate for their employees. God bless you. And so they're marketing to small businesses. We're marketing to community. So all these organizations are meeting together and planning where, where are the pockets or areas that nobody is marketing to. There's another organization, um, the IPAs, I forgot what they stand for, but they were contracted, the, uh, I think they're called in-person assisters through CMS uh, grant, and they will go to people's homes, they will go into different areas that are not being addressed. So we're meeting together and sharing a map of what we're focusing on, and those areas that are being left untouched, they're gonna be directed to ACOG and or IPA. But I think the biggest help though is going to be people like yourself that have a heart for our neighbors and we know who is confused and is not likely to even ask about it and they're just going to face this penalty. So we need to watch our neighbors and then point them. I think there's going to be a clearinghouse website through uh, the as well. Bear County. Bear County. Yeah, I, I, I hear you and I, I respect the, the, the Anna Maria Fortes, what you're saying. But you know, some of the groups you mentioned, outreach is not in their DNA. You mentioned the city of San Antonio, red flag goes up. You mentioned Bear County Hospitals, red flag goes up. They don't know anything about reaching our people. Well, and, and let me clarify that. Um, you raised a good point in that, and yes, thank you for We're uh, doing, I want to say TOPS with the Texas Organizing Project. We're doing out the outreach, and we've worked with, with TC and this group, and we just hired canvassers, and we're hiring phone bankers. 
But so um, the, in the, neighborhood. the other thing is that we're also working with cops to see what we can do to outreach to the faith-based organizations because we well, know... I, I have all the confidence in the world to Cops Metro Alliance. Sure. I've worked with them in the past. They have a track record and the people trust them. Correct. But here's what we're up against. We're up against the Fox News spin mm -hmm. and we have a lot of people in our community, specifically in the west side, south side, east side, where they're being brainwashed uh, by, you know, the, the Rush Limbaugh spin about, you know, not participating in this program. And I'm just going to say this. I think we have done a lousy job in how we have framed this issue. And that's why we're getting beat up so bad by the right-wing conservatives. Mm -hmm. Because we're not framing the issue. We're not marketing to our people uh, the way it should be done. The best program I've seen is what this young lady has done here this morning. And I've been to a lot of programs, and this program is what needs to happen. But we need to get it out on the airways. We need to get it out in our media to make sure that people know what's going on. Or we're going to get beat up and all that. There's, there's, a com there's a comment back here. We have Saturday events, uh, two or three events a month for the next couple of months. We're, we're both on that manner. One of the things we're also noticing is that when we ask people, how did you hear about us? They're citing news articles on the TV and newsprint. So we're getting the word out that way, and we're collecting that data and finding out what method is reaching that population that we're discussing. And the faith-based organization, we've been in touch with several churches and, and other religious groups around the communities and that's where we are uh, as a club. And so they're sending people to and from. Our call volume has spiked dramatically in the last week with the, the national visibility. So I think people, it's, it's a trickle-down effect in terms of awareness. And then um, the United Way Helpline is another resource where people are calling to find out where to go to have an in-person assister with uh, the application while well, the website is not functioning properly. So it's here and there, but it is coming together. I mean, we're launching something from ground zero to get it up and moving. Well, I'll, and I'll, I think- I would invite uh, uh, Central Med to be a part of the KROV radio station, which is a radio station I'm a part of, San Antonio Community Radio. We reach a lot of those people. We've had talks on them. We've had a role in America. We haven't had you guys. Obviously. I know. And TC, yeah. thank you so much. And I think this we did reach these people, and the, they're here to get their 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 well, we'll continue one on one. Discussion and with you. We need to continue this discussion, but we want to get these people into An into their into office the application site. site. Yeah. Thank you. So, so in the meantime, let, oh, let's I go think, ahead and take. Yeah, oh, you have a question. question. I was to say, how much more time do we have? I just want want to know. Mm -hmm. are we, we have another we, uh, two people that are already signed up. Yeah, but so, um, we so want to just put these um, families in a with a family. Um, I mean, uh, application mm -hmm. assistant. Person. Okay, I was going to say, let's take the value of the time that we spent asking our questions. Uh, have those questions ready for when you have that opportunity. And so, um, you know, just before our presentation concludes, I I really want to to thank you again for coming, and also to say, you know, hopefully with everything that's happened uh, in our in our capital, that people are ready now. People of goodwill. Uh, you know, conservatives, liberals, whatever, you know, however people self-identify, hopefully they're ready to be pragmatic and work together, um, especially to reach, you know, our most vulnerable. So God bless you for what you're doing. Thank you for coming out today. And thank you uh, to the Office of Pink Ayer. Quick question. Quick question. Just the numbers for we can Well, there's different numbers. So the for Central Med, because we are making appointments according to your schedule, we are directing people to the, our main call center, which is 922-7000. However, if, if you want to promote it to anybody in the community, you can walk, you're can you welcome to do that. But you also can call the 211 line, and they can direct you to a location that's near your neighborhood. So if there might not be, you know, this might not be convenient to somebody in the east side. They can direct you to Communicare. And Communicare, I know they're here as well, and they're one of the agencies that was funded as well. And they have a site at the Frank Bryan Center and different locations. Um, so there's different locations that can help you. But 211 is a main line that can direct you to different places. Central Med can help you, and we can also direct you to other locations. So we're all if working to do that. If you want to see any of these slides that we've talked about, you can go to the COPS Metro Alliance website, and then I think CA may have other things on YouTube in the future, um, hopefully with only my voice. Yeah. <laughs> so that's so uh, yeah, anybody us. who's ready for uh, <laughs> There's a quick question right here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was going to say that when I had called the numbers that are in the, the reporter. What do they have? They have the numbers for the different Central Meds. Which referred me to the nine set the nine two two seven hundred option four. So even though I called the specific med, 
they still transfer me somewhere else to call. Yeah, and the reason we're not encouraging you to call the different clinic sites because we have a system where it's going to track how many calls we're getting. But direct, but yeah, and we need to follow up with them as to why they're listing that number because we're telling everybody to list the nine two two seven thousand. They're listing all of them, the location. Yeah, the that's too bad. Is, um, I can't sharing. control what media prints, but uh, well, <laughs> but, but we'll definitely look into it. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you for coming. I have a question. Um, can y'all dial the nine two two? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have a question. Make sure you um, Press four. get the option four. Yeah. And it'll cool. direct you directly where you want to go instead of dialing another option. Besides the four, if you dial the four, it'll take you directly where you want to go. No, well, and I it'll take you directly right to the certified application counselors who sometimes patients just have a question. Mm -hmm. You know, do I have to apply? I have CareLink. Well, no, you don't. You know, if you have CareLink, it is not an insurance. Yeah. So it can, this. yeah. So, but yeah. if you, they can direct you, you can encourage them to listen to Tom four. Um, we're just encouraging them to listen to the, the, the four options that are available if you want to make an appointment or visit with a doctor or whatever. But Tom four is for the health insurance marketplace. But in the meantime, let me take you into an exam room. I mean, an exam room. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> today. Let me take you into the. Um, uh, yeah, I'm a doctor today. Don't quack quack. Uh, we're going to take you into an office visit where that we can answer your questions more personally and help you apply for the process. And although I know with the system is not working, we do see a lot of families that really want to do the one-on-one -on -one, uh, application. And we are doing paper applications, and we've already seen. The people we've applied that have applied through the paper application are already getting enrolled. Yes. So it is the fast turnaround time. However, I heard that the easiest and the fastest system is calling the 1 800 line. So it's up to you, but we can help you either way. Thank you. So if these ladies guys here will help us.